Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast. To join a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice, head to xyadvisor.com. Clayton here from XY Advisor, interviewing Derek from the U.S. Uh, whereabouts in the U.S.? I am based in Madison, Wisconsin, which is about, let's say, two, two and a half hours north of Chicago. Okay. Awesome. Wow. So that's that's very north then. Yeah, it gets pretty cold here. And, and the funny thing is, is this is the most southern place I've ever lived. <laughs> I see you're Canadian then, must be. Well, yeah, pretty much. I grew up in Minnesota. I I went to school in northern Minnesota, so I was only a couple hours from the border. Yeah, right. um, I lived out east for a while in Vermont, and I was, I think, 20 miles from the Canadian border. Jesus. Yeah, right. So almost Canadian. Um, I, I married a Finn, and there's a lot of Finns in, uh, up the north there of – pretty sure around minnesota it's around oh totally there. definitely yeah yeah yeah, yeah. definitely there, there sure is <laughs> <laughs> um but you are the creator of it, it's called the the virtual advisor system that is correct yes and you're also a cfp that is correct so yep. you're also uh, a, an experienced advisor but you have uh, you've been doing working from home i guess you could call it for a long time and you've figured out what works and what doesn't Yes, totally. Yeah, I've, I've been an advisor since 2006, but I've been virtual since 2007. Yeah, I mean, right. I'm sorry, two, 2013, my bad, 2013, yep. Right, right. And because um, as I explained, we're in the middle of the, the work from home tour and we're going to add this in as sort of an addendum, I think, because uh, we didn't quite book you in in time. Um, however, I think there's a lot that advisors can learn from you. And so here's one of the interesting things that it's dawned on me uh, during this work from home tour. And that is working from home is especially now is the new normal. However, oh. I would say from this point moving forward, it's going to be insanely more accepted. Oh my gosh. And, and it's, it's going to be uh, like, I don't think it's going to be a strange thing to do virtual meetings any, anymore. And, and we've been doing them for years and, and Zoom's been around for a long time, but it's always been a, well, why would we do a, a virtual meeting if we can just meet in person? But I was speaking with Michael Kitsis yesterday or the day before, no, it was yesterday. And, um, and he, was, he was saying, look, when you have an in-person meeting, you might not need to meet for an hour. However, it takes so long to catch up that the gravity of the meeting has to be such that you fill in an hour and you're wasting yep. your time. You're wasting your client's time and you're doing less meetings. And so his whole point was move to short, sharp, rapid meetings that are more frequent. I'm not sure if that's your system or not, but that was essentially his, his argument for why meetings uh, don't have to be in person anymore. And I, I feel like this whole COVID thing, we've all gotten used to it. Every, uh, you know, Zoom has skyrocketed. Everyone, everyone thinks it's hilarious. And it, but it's true in that this professional services industry can certainly be run by wasting less of people's time and doing yeah. more digital meetings, right? So like... I, even though this has been obvious for years and certainly to people like you, and I, I've been somewhat of a heavy user of tech, I, I I've certainly haven't prioritized it over, say, uh, other. Uh, I haven't prioritized tech over meeting in person, but I'm really interested uh, as someone who's not only been doing advice but via distance virtually for a long time, but is so confident in it that you built a system around it. <laughs> Mate, you've got to talk to us. Uh, where do we start? Yeah, man. Uh, there's so many good nuggets in what you just said there. Where do I start? So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I, I would agree with Kitsis for sure. Just from like a scalability standpoint, when you're meeting belly to belly, there is only so much time in the day to do that. And even if you're crushing it, you know, maybe doing five, six meetings a day, you're going to burn out quick. And it's just tough. 
And I did it that way. I started that way because I just didn't know any different and that's what I was taught. But it's not scalable. And not only are you trying to fill that hour meeting and there's like, you know, like how are the kids and all that stuff. It's all important. I mean, we're human beings. Like, I get it. This is important. But those are business meetings. And so you're filling it with some fluff. But then you've got the drive time, right, that you, to get there or to their house or to the clients or to the advisor's office. So, you know, a, a, a half hour meeting could take two, three hours of your day. Yeah. And so I, I totally agree with them. So it is scalable and virtual really empowers advisors to have these quicker, more pointed meetings, but still a ton of value packed into them. And that's what the, the response I've got from so many clients for years now is they love it. They're getting that personalized service, but they're not wasting time. So um, I, I, I totally agree with that. I, I think just like your point about the pandemic and everything, I, I think we were on this so I love to surf. So I like using surfing analogies. I need to go surfing down and where you guys are in Australia, yeah. man. I mean, geez, that's, <laughs> that's one place I haven't had a chance to, to go yet, but is like, you, you see the wave setting up, right? And sometimes you hit oh, the yeah. wave early and, yeah. and you know, it, it can take a while. Maybe you don't hit it right and you have to wait for the next one. So this wave has been happening for some time. Um, and human beings by nature are, I don't know if lazy is the right word because a lot of human beings are really hard, but we don't like to change unless we're forced to. Yes. That's just human nature. It's fine. Totally normal for all of us. And the pandemic has forced the issue now and made something that was on the fringe of acceptable to totally acceptable. Yeah. One thing you just mentioned there in terms of timing and in terms of change, I think is super accurate. Um, if I was to consider Zoom meeting, I, I, in fact – to this extent. So as this COVID thing was, you know, unfolding, um, I, my wife's pregnant and I was sort of a little bit more sensitive to things. So I went into quarantine a bit early and I guess, uh, probably about three weeks before anyone was even speaking of lockdown, I wrote to everyone via email and said, Hey, changing all of my in-person meetings to virtual meetings. Brilliant. And, but, and, but everyone was like this. Everyone was like, ah, oh. they didn't say this in email, but when we eventually caught up, uh, it was, you know, everyone was in lockdown and everyone sort of said the same thing to me. They said, I thought it was weird because we were, we, we'd planned an in-person meeting and you sure. shifted to a virtual meeting. Um, however, now that all this COVID's happening, I, I mean, the, like it makes so much sense. But, but I think two things were happening there. Yes, I, I was being oversensitive. Um, but more importantly, I think the, the, the interesting part there is there was an initial hesitation, which I feel has now been broken probably permanently. Yeah. And so in terms of a wave, as you mentioned, yeah, we've all kind of like been paddling for a while. We might not have had a long board. We might have had a short board. <laughs> so you've got to sort of time it a lot better, right? And so it's, it, it, but it, it, the wave is absolutely breaking right now. I think everyone's forced to get used to it. Everyone's getting past the awkward, oh, the camera's staring at my nostrils and, you know, well, okay, what's this thing? What's the difference between a spit, you know, it's, I think we're all collectively getting past it and we're all being sort of generous with our uh, timing. It's okay, you know, catch up to speed kind of thing. That I, 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 am, I am now really interested to see if something like a WeWork, that business is going to survive at all. Oh my all, gosh, you know? right? Well, any of the massive infrastructure businesses or industries that relied so heavily on in-person it's we're, we're proving you don't have to be in person to do a lot of stuff. Now, I don't think any of that's going to go away entirely because human beings at our like DNA level, we're wired to connect, right? I mean, that's, you can't get married, you know, in the, uh, you know, or have a marriage virtually. I mean, I suppose technically you can, but who wants to, right? You know? Um, so there's just, there are just some things we have to do in person. That's cool. But like when it comes to business, I think we can totally rock this virtual thing. Yeah. Um, and as you mentioned earlier, like, yeah, I believe so much in it. Not only am I living it and have for some time, but I built a system around it yeah. to help others. And I didn't build it because of the pandemic. I, I created the system and went live with it before any of this stuff was even on the news. 
Yeah, right. and I I just got lucky with the timing. Um, but really, one of the main reasons I built this, and I've talked about this a little bit before, is the life work balance, and not work life, life work balance, mm-hmm. really can be awful as an advisor. It's it's not a nine to five job, so you're working yep. nights and weekends. You're dealing with a ton of rejection. Yeah, um, and I'm not sure how it works in um, in Australia. I've talked to some advisors down there, but I believe it's similar, pretty much all around the world. Is most advisors, unless you're like in a bank channel or an insurance, like an actual insurance employee or something, you don't get a paycheck, right? Yeah. There's no guaranteed paycheck, right? You got so you've got the financial stress now, yeah. and so like I, I really built it to give advisors a way to take their life back a little bit and have a really high quality of life to do whatever it is that they're passionate about, but not at the expense of their business because you could be so much more efficient and reach so many more people in this virtual, even a semi-virtual manner. Now everybody wins and that's how it should be. Yeah, no, hands down. And so I'm super interested. How long um, did it take you to build this system? And then I kind of want to go into the little bits and pieces of it, if that's okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I fell into it by accident. Cool. And I shared this story in depth with, with Kitsis, with Michael Kitsis, who great dude. And, you know, I'll, I'll summarize it, but like I, I ended up moving my family halfway across America for a business opportunity that went south a month after I got here. Oof. Yeah, it was brutal. And so I was like, all right, well, I st- do I stay or do I go back to where I was? And I, we didn't really want to go back. We wanted to be closer to family. We had a young child. And just, you know, it's nice to be at home and, and, and just do something or closer to home and something different. So I was traveling a ton and that really started to suck the life out of me. I'm like, okay, well, maybe I should start trying to do virtual meetings instead of flying every couple of weeks. Yeah. And I did that. So I go down this whole long journey, like what's social media, what's a website, how do I do all this stuff? What's SEO? <laughs> and there was no one. I shouldn't say no one. There are a couple of people out there that I followed who were trailblazers even before me that inspired me to, to keep going, but yeah. there was no system. There was no blueprint, no roadmap, no, no trail map to the top of the mountain on how to do it. Yes. So it took a number of years to figure it out. And then about a year and a half ago, so this is the entrepreneur side of me now, because I'm still an active CFP. I, I have active clients I'm working with every day. Very cool. Um, the entrepreneurial side of me, though, was having kind of one of those down days. I was just like, you know, I feel like I should be doing more with my life. I, sh- I feel I want to create something and give something back. Um, and I'm all about helping myself by helping others. So I think that's a great way to, to yes. just live life. And so I, I literally got a yellow pad out and started jotting down business ideas. And I'm like halfway down the yellow pad and I'm like, wait a minute, virtual advisor. Mm. And I'm like, holy crap, I think that's it. And (laughs) within what, 24, 36 hours later, I had the whole business built on a yellow pad. And then, you know, it took me then a year, about a year to have the whole thing actually built by hiring different teams, creating the content and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, it, it was a lot of work, but it was a fun journey. Wow. So, and I can understand why there, there's an amazing advisor in the U S her name is Kate Holmes. I'm not sure if you've ever come across her. I know she, her. Yes. She's uh, awesome. There you go. So I, she'd done, um, quite well working from home. I, I, I've interviewed her in the past and um, there, there's certainly, there's some shifts that need to happen. Uh, how, how many stages or how many different parts of your system exist? I, I'm kind of interested to get into the nuts and bolts. Yeah. So, I mean, people can even see the general framework if they go to the website, but there's essentially 12 modules and I, I take you through a journey and it's different than pretty much any other. So I don't even call this a coaching program, although it has coaching elements in it. Sure. Um, Cause most coaching programs get, and I've even taken some, they get you super motivated, excited, get you to buy in at these great concepts, which are all very important, but then you get a pat on the back and off you're on your own. Yeah. And you're like, uh, okay, well, what do I do? 
do <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and that's a disconnect for advisors because advisors do, given the nature of paycheck to paycheck, high stress, rejection, we want answers and we want actionable items that so we can do stuff quick. Totally, yes. Right? So the system starts off by really focusing on the why for the advisor and their hopes, dreams, and goals, not just as an advisor, but as a human being. Because that's going to drive your motivation, but it's also going to drive, and people don't realize this, it drives your branding. It drives your messaging for your business because now you're going to be speaking to a very specific person that's going to be like you from an ideal client perspective. Yeah. So it starts like that, but then I get right into the nuts and bolts. This is how you do this, 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 and this, X, Y, Z, all the way through from setting up a digital footprint to marketing to a virtual sales process to the virtual physical infrastructure that you need to run a business, um, virtual support team, service, all of this stuff. And I do it in a progressive way so it builds upon itself. Um, so it's a ton of fun. And I, I will tell you the biggest roadblock and I, Kate might, I think even have said this, I, I've talked to Kate, she's great. Um, is it's the advisor's mindset. It's like deciding to climb that mountain that you can see on the horizon. That's the hardest decision. Once you've decided to climb it, you can go do it. It's not going to be easy, but if you don't have the mental transition there first, it's really going to be difficult to actually go climb. So that's the biggest challenge I've seen with advisors. And I think it's twofold. One is they're resistant to change just because we are in a very old industry. But two, the training from all of the large institutions and even some of the smaller ones is all teaching advisors how to do stuff like it's 1985. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So when you are like, when you're going against the current, that's a tough one, right? Yes. So I think that's the challenge, but that has all changed, I think, very quickly now in the last two months, given the situation we find ourselves in. <clears throat> yeah. So XY, we're an ecosystem of podcasts that we're doing now. We do events. Um, current one is a virtual tour, but typically in person. And also we're a social media platform for advisors. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you the crazy thing about being a social media company is that it was only a handful of years ago that I didn't know what social media was. Right. <laughs> and, 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 and I mean in terms of, I knew Facebook existed and I was on Facebook and I knew that um, I was able to talk to people on Facebook, but I didn't understand what Facebook was or Twitter or Instagram or LinkedIn. And, I, and, and when I say I didn't understand what it was, I didn't understand in, this, in any way how it could help my business, uh, sure. my financial planning business. And uh, to the point that <clears throat> I remember, if this is very embarrassing confession of someone who literally runs a team with a social media platform. Um, I remember sitting in a presentation up the back with a couple of older advisors. Now I was, I was quite young, yeah. um, you know, for, for a, a principal advisor. Uh, and we were all sitting up the back and someone was up the front. I couldn't tell you who it was, but they were just saying how you can use social media in your business. And I remember like laughing about the concept <laughs> with older guys up the back of the room. And, and, you know, I was like maybe 30 years old, 31 years old. Um, uh, so it was kind of, if, if there wasn't an audience that should have understood it, it was me. Right. And yet I had no idea. I just didn't get it. I, I was thinking, uh, why would a client want to look at me, uh, look at uh, pictures of me partying in South America, <laughs> right? Because, because that was my, that was my interpretation of what social media was. Social media was uh, uh, stuff that I put up so that I could laugh about it with friends or, or, right. you know, or enjoy it with family. Uh, I, it then dawned on me. Um, we have this lovely, lovely lady here who does uh, a lot of social media work. Her name's Jenny. And she walked me through what social media was. And once it dawned on me that social media is simply targeted advertising, it all made sense. I was like, oh, right. So 
I'm the product on Facebook because I'm the one that's sharing all my data and putting all my information up there and partaking in it. I was like, oh, I understand now. So I'm the product that's, that, that's getting used to, to be sold and I make up the demographics as does everyone. And now all of a sudden it makes sense to me from how, it, how I can use it in my business. And at that point that it triggered to me, um, it, it, it changed my life. Game changer for sure, right? Yeah. It really is. And it, yeah, just like the telephone was a game changer for our industry. However many years ago, you know, they started using it, right? Because like, I don't have to walk around neighborhoods and knock on doors. I can call people now? <laughs> Holy smokes, this is amazing, right? So we've just taken it a little bit further. You know, it's not the 80s anymore. And and we're, we're rocking it with social. So yeah, I mean, it is a total game changer. And I, I don't know about Australia, but there are some challenges here in the States with some compliance pieces of it. But our, our federal regulations allow us to use it as long as we do a certain, you know, some certain things. So a, a lot of advisors, at least here, get nervous. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. Well, you can. I've actually, I've actually called our regulators, our federal regulators, and had conversations like, hey, I want to do this. Is that okay? Yeah. And I'm like, yes, you can do this. And here's the rule saying you can. So it's just <sighs> advisors have to evolve a bit with their thinking. Yes. And I believe – um, something's recently changed in the U S regarding that as well. Right. Because it used to be, you couldn't use recommendations, but I believe recommendations are allowed now. Well, they're getting there. Right. So, and I forget what year it was is in the 1930s. One of the securities acts said you can't have testimonials. Yeah. So, you know, we're pushing a hundred years now of not being able to have testimonials and they're finally, they, I don't think it's been approved yet, but they are looking at opening that up for us at least. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, that makes things, I mean, the more that you can talk about, but here's the thing, uh, is there any reason why you can't talk about a client's problem and a client's solution without using their personal details? Well, no, you can do that. But what I have found is that very rarely talking about product or investments, people don't care. Totally. They want to know how does it help solve their problem, as you yeah. just said, right? You know, give me an example, like a, a case study, like show me what you do and the process you take people through. Yeah. And like benefits of, right? Like benefits of, of financial planning, like now you've got this peace of mind roadmap to do everything you want to do in the future. When yeah. you phrase it like that, people are like, oh, yeah, that's cool. I'll do that. Yeah. Right. When you talk about this hundred page document that you have to go through, like, uh, uh-uh. uh, you know, I'm not interested. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, one of the things that Carl Richard has said on the work from home tour, was a really interesting concept. He goes, uh, when you go to an artist website and you look at, uh, work, you know, examples of work, what yes. You, what you see is you see paintings or you see short videos of, when you go to a financial planner's website, it says we do cash flow and budgeting, retirement planning, you know, <laughs> and just lists all the things that we do. Imagine if you went to an artist's website and they said we use paint and and canvas and easels, <laughs> and you know, and and it would just be absolutely ridiculous. And yet, for some reason, advisors don't have an about us uh, or, or examples of work part of their website with just client testimonial or, 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 or maybe not a testimonial. Let, let's make it even more compliant. Um, examples of clients who had problems and who have experienced solutions. And, um, and that would be, that would be uh, as a client, I'm looking, as you mentioned, for someone to solve my problem, not to hear about anything else, how it oh, affects yeah. me and how it makes my life better. So, so this whole uh, digital marketing, I think it, it goes without saying. Mo- moving on to sort of, I guess, the execution or, or the onboarding. What, what do you, what do you uh, talk about in terms of onboarding a digital client? Because obviously that's a very sensitive part of the process. It is. Um, so there's, there's something, I, I don't know if I coined it first, but I've been using the term a lot and I haven't seen anywhere else, but something I call the trust and transparency exchange model. And so what, what that means is people don't buy digitally or not from a product or a service if they can't trust the source 
right? And they don't have transparency from that source. Hmm. It's just the way it is. Like you don't go, um, I don't know what, what your equivalent would be down in Australia. We have a, a chain here called Best Buy. And they, they sell all types of electronics, TVs, computers, video games, you name it, appliances, pretty big deal here. And you wouldn't go in there, one, if they weren't a reputable brand, and then you definitely wouldn't buy something if they had a whole bunch of TVs there, but no prices listed. So they're not being transparent. Yeah. So what I, what I really encourage advisors is, is to create this environment, this digital footprint, this environment where people can get to know you not just what you do, but who you are, family, passions, hobbies, all that kind of stuff, who you do it for, what your prices are, give them as much information as possible. So when they eventually contact you, they're going to be like, I feel like I know you already. Yeah. And so when, so when you create that environment of trust and transparency, if you do it correctly, because you can totally mess it up online too. You can totally ruin it if you're not careful. Um, if you do it correctly, though, you really create this awesome environment. I'll give a quick example. I'm very active on LinkedIn is one of the, the pro platforms I use. And I'm very cautious to put only out really good, valuable content. I'm not selling. I'm just talking, you know, I, I blend it with personal and business and just different ideas and concepts. And I connected with this gentleman who I consider to be an ideal client. And I even said, like, listen, I'm not trying to sell you anything. You know, you seem like a, a globally, you know, global person, well-traveled business owner. I would love to connect with you. I'm not going to sell you anything. Um, I just put a ton of valuable content out on this platform. He accepted the request, but didn't say anything back. Three weeks later, I get a direct message from him. Hey, Derek, been watching your content love your stuff, uh, you know, would, would love to set up a time to chat with you about their, their situation. Get on the call a week later, virtual meeting, of course, never met these people, different time zones, great. And the wife said, she's like, you know what? We stalked you. <laughs> we, we looked at your posts. We looked at your profile, your websites. We Googled you. And if I had not created this environment of trust and transparency where they could feel like they could know me and who is Derek and what does he do, then they never would have been comfortable working with me. Yeah. So that's a little bit of a long winded answer, but that's where I would say like, that's the onboarding as you, as you called it, or what an advisor needs to be really top of mind when they're doing it. And it, it sounds complicated. It isn't, it's simple, but it still requires work. There's a, a, a successful advisor here in Australia and he was, he'd done a lot of work on building a business and, and had uh, all the sort of digital assets that were out there that you're talking about. And he was experiencing a low conversion rate. I'll call it a conversion rate because that's exactly what it was. People would uh, connect you know, online or, or wherever, go through the process and he was uh, thir about 35% of the clients that sort of were coming to him via this journey ended up becoming clients. And he was looking at these other 65% who were ideal clients who weren't opting in. Anyway, so he goes away to this uh, business retreat thing, whatever. And, and he, uh, he gets a chance to ask the head guy, the head educator, a solution. In. So he says, this is my process. What am I doing wrong? And the guy says to him something really simple. He just goes, well, you're just not showing them your fees until the meeting. He goes, you're not being transparent Bingo. with your fees. And so what he did was didn't change anything in the process except for one thing. He created a short video, a short uh, two Five, I can't remember, a couple of minute video. And all it does is walks the, the client through his process, talks about his fees, and then, and then uh, at, 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 this is after the person's booked in for a meeting and sends them the video as, as sort of like an onboarding thing. And he won't accept the meeting unless he can tell that they've watched the video, right? Oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so... And so his, his conversion rate of, again, ideal clients doubled, doubled wow. overnight 
without changing anything else, went from 35% to like 70%, right? And all he wow. did was, he didn't lower the price. All he did was before the person walked into the meeting, uh, knew what the price was with, with this like cool couple of minute video, just introduce them to the pro because like yourself, he's done a lot of work to get a lot of data and information about himself out there. And then as the person was coming into that sort of pointy end of the funnel, sends them a video and says, well, this is how it all makes sense for you. Also, these are the fees. And then when the person turned up for the meeting, there was never the great big reveal, right? right? And if I think back to my financial planning days, that was always the worst part. It was always the, oh, now I've got to show you what the fees are. Now, I believed in them. I wasn't the cheapest in the market and I could stand by them. But that moment was awkward. He, he never has to experience that ever again. The clients don't have to experience that ever again. There's not some little monkey in the back of the mind going, <laughs> what's the fees? What's the fees? What's the fees? He solves it up front. So I think that whole concept of being transparent, especially with fees, is awesome. Yeah, man. I, I love that. I'm actually going to incorporate that idea. Yeah. I like that. I like the little video idea. I mean, I've, I've got everything out there, but that little, just a two minute video. Yes. I think that's brilliant. And, and one thing I have suggested to advisors is like, how often when you're buying a service, do they call it a fee? They call it a price. What's right. the price? A fee has a little bit more of a negative connotation I have found. Like people are always like, well, what are the fees on this or that? And that, that's just negative. But when you say like, here are my prices, prices, yeah. prices really mean like, here's the value you're going to get in exchange for the money you're going to pay me. Yes. It's a small thing, but I think it's really powerful. And to do it with your, your example there of that little onboarding video it's not a lot of work and what a great way to introduce yourself and get the ball rolling. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I really like that. Actually, these are the prices. That's uh, it's, it's a bunch of these things because you're, you're not trying to fool anyone. You're just trying to more, you try to more accurately describe the exchange yes. of value. That's all. And, and, and why, why put it, why even put a connotation where it's a negative thing? Because let's face it, Good financial advice, in my opinion, is the best thing that someone can buy. <laughs> so, oh my so, gosh! Yeah. So, so, so to 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 call it a fee rather than a price, I think is really good. So, I fully understand the onboarding, and I love that concept. Um, what about the the data acquisition stage? So, the what we call here a fact find. Um, but the discovery, how do you do? You do that in person, or do you use tools, or, or what's the process there? All virtual, all virtual. I, I've got a, a specific part of my system <clears throat> teaches people my exact virtual sales process where I even have a mock interview where I take people I've never met through my entire process. So it's really cool. That is cool. J just so they can see like mannerisms and, you know, technique and terms and all that kind of stuff. But um, my process, which is on my website, again, very transparent, is first meeting is a get to know us meeting. Uh, if I can't go get a beer with you, if I can't like, you know, just hang out with you and have a good time, and that means we're not going to like each other, yeah. which means we're not going to trust each other, which means we're not going to work together. And too many advisors are taught to have this shotgun approach, work with as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And there, that's bad for so many reasons. So the first chat is usually half hour, 15 minutes maybe depending because you can usually figure out pretty quick if you like somebody or not and then right you just that's just human humans are pretty good good character ju you know judges pretty quick so if at the end of that meeting we're you know, we feel good about it and i just did this a couple days ago and at the end of the meeting, i'm like listen you're a cool guy i think we get along we've got a lot of similar interests together I, you know i'd be happy to take you on as a client uh, you know, would you be open to going on to the you know, next step to talk about everything? He's like, yes, totally. Love this. You know, let's, let's do it. And then, and then we go through the sales process. All of my fact finding is done online and it's two parts. Uh, one part is more qualitative data. Mm -hmm. What are their hopes, dreams, and goals? Because at the end of the day, if I don't know that, it doesn't matter the other stuff. Like the, 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 the future vision, the values, the things that keep you up at night are what drive everything else. Yeah. 
So I teach advisors to get that part first, and then the other back-end stuff is all the quantitative data. Let's get all your finances. Let's establish a financial baseline. Go from there, and then we build upon that. And it's well, always financial planning driven first, uh, not product, none of that stuff. The, all that other stuff will be a byproduct of doing really good planning. Right. And do you just simply get the, get the information by talking or do you use any technology? Do you, do you do everything in person or do they need to go away and complete things by themselves or what, what kind of structure do you use? Both. All the qualitative stuff is stuff that I want to ask personally and have dialogue. Cool. And, I, and I don't just say like, you know, if they say, well, I want to retire, that's important. I'll be like, well, why? You know, a lot of advisors will stop and just say retirement, important. Yeah. Well, why is that important? What does that look like? You're really digging in on that. So that's all stuff. I'll do it online. You know, we do it, you know, together real time. But after that, then I will actually send them a link to some tech I use where they can enter in their entire financial life from the comfort of their couch. They don't need me looking over their shoulder and, you know, they can link all their accounts and, you know, so it's convenient for them, shows them that we're tech forward, but also we're listening to what's really important to them. Um, and then, so that makes, that all makes sense. Delivery, I guess it speaks for itself. The documentation is created. Um, are you using any pieces of tech? Do you, do you sort of in real time go through different scenarios or are you, is, is it uh, a little bit more static? Real time. Okay. Yeah, cool. real time. So I don't know if you guys have it down there. We have something here called eMoney. eMoney. No, I'd never heard of it. That's a brilliant platform. And there, there's a lot of, um, uh, similar type text here in the States. Um, so there's, there's a lot of different options here. I'm sure you guys have something similar down there. Um, so we can literally like, I'll share my screen. We'll have a virtual meeting. We're chatting like we are right now. Yep. And I can show them in real time projections, cash flow, And they'll be like, well, what if I do this instead of this? Yeah. Boom. Real time. Here's the outcome. Right. So now awesome. we're getting answers right then and there. And you can literally see it in some people's faces. Like they're like, oh, <laughs> they get it. They're getting the answers they've wanted for years. Even if they didn't articulate it, they're getting the answers that they've always wanted. And it's just awesome. It's just awesome. And doing it in real time is nice. So I'm like, Oh, that's a good question. I'll come back in two weeks with an answer. And the answer may not be what you want. So then we'll have to do it again. You know, it's just too clunky the old way. Yeah, no, we uh, we were talking about that with Michael yesterday. That's exactly the scenario he was painting. So e money, okay, that's that's uh, I haven't heard of it, but it sounds like a really good pro uh, program. It's robust. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And then uh, in terms of ongoing, so you have you have the plan. Human beings being human beings is rarely anything is. Uh, you know, a direct line. And one of the things we we're talking about with kids yesterday was this whole, uh, sorry, um, no, it was with Carl last week. Uh, this idea that uh, agile software development represents a good structure for um, advice. And that is, you know, we have the long-term goal that we're working towards, but realizing that there's pivots that need to be happening or agile, right? So, okay, this is happening in your life. We need to go here and sort of combine that with Kitsis's ideas of having short, sharp meetings that are regular. Um, how are you, um, are you sort of mimicking or, or reflecting that strategy at all? Are you having multiple quick 15 minute meetings uh, or are you sort of sticking to the more at this stage traditional system or how are you approaching it? For onboarding new clients, we definitely do a deep dive and spend more time. So they're not 15 minute meetings. Yeah. Once they are a client and we have a, um, a roadmap that we're going to go follow, then yeah, it's, it's, it's quicker pointed meetings depending on what's going on. And so we have a schedule of, you know, where we will reach out, you know, so many times a year just to say, hey, checking in, have you done this? What's going on? And a lot of that will even be short videos, like just to mm -hmm. say hi instead of doing it with an email. Um, so we do that. They're, we're always there for them as well so they can contact us. My virtual staff, you know, does all the service-related stuff. And then with the money, it's the, one of the beautiful things about it is it's updated daily. Every mm -hmm. day, all of the projections, everything's updated based upon their actual financial life. Wow. 
So they sell a house, sell a business, get a new job, whatever. We update the numbers in there. Boom. Okay, now we can see new projections. So <clears throat> it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to be able to see that stuff. So once they're a client, we don't need to spend a ton of time yeah. updating stuff, going through shoe boxes of statements and all that stuff because we've got it all. And now we just have to make little pivots, as you say, um, as life happens. That's super interesting. So is eMoney or whatever the software that you, you use – do they have 24 seven access to that? Yeah. So it's, it's a data aggregator, right? Yes. So it, it, um, do you guys, you know, are you familiar with mint? Uh, yes. I'm not sure how popular it is, but I do. I, I have heard of it. Yes. There are some similarities to that. And then like, so you can go in through the dashboard I set up for a client and then they can like, well, I've got my retirement account over here. I've got this, you know, mortgage over here bank accounts, whatever, and they tie all that in and they're live linked. Mm -hmm. So none of the data can be compromised within this dashboard. No changes can be made to any accounts by them or me. Right. So if someone did hack it, I think the most they would be able to know is like how much you're worth. Right, right. right. You know, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. Not, not terrible. Um, but yeah, the, so then that those links, unless they break, which sometimes you have to update your password and stuff, but they're pulling data every day. Awesome. And updating, and updating. So like I know what positions my clients are in for investments, what the values have done, all of that stuff. Yeah, right. And how many clients have you, how many clients have you pushed through a, a digital system in like, let's say the last few years? Oh my gosh, a lot. <laughs> and I, I've been trying to whittle down. So when I made the transition to a virtual advisor, I had a large book of clients. Right. Uh, because that was the old model. Get yes. as many clients as you can. Yes. And it, it was really difficult. So I'm still trying to unwind that. And it's not that they're bad people or, you know, it, it's just, it's not a fit for the business model I have. Yes. And they, they will better be, probably be better served somewhere else to be perfectly honest. Yep. Um, so and every new client that comes in, they go through this process. Awesome. They have to. That that, and I'm very clear about that on my website. This is how I work. I even say I am a virtual wealth partner. This is what I do. Um, but gosh, I even took existing clients. It's it's got to be a couple hundred at this point. Man, that's uh, that's that's a lot, right? And so, in terms of you don't have a drastically different uh, advice. It's just. Um, been modernized, if you want to call that, call it that way. So your whole process is the traditional financial planning, but just po especially post COVID is the new normal. It's the new normal. It's being delivered through a different medium, which people, I mean, people have accepted the stuff before. I, th I think they just had a struggle almost on the advisor side. I think the consumer actually wanted this more than the advisor did yeah. because the consumer's doing their banking online, they're dating, their groceries, everything online. So why can't they get what we do online? Yeah, it's a really good point. Even myself, we've moved to, we've never had groceries delivered ever, but just during the latest sort of situation that we're in, we've moved to getting our groceries delivered. And now it's one of those things. <laughs> it's hilarious because you see on LinkedIn, all these people have been driving to work for the last 20, 30 years, <laughs> spending three to four hours in traffic every day. They're on LinkedIn going, oh my God, I didn't realize how good this was. And it's almost like, it's almost, you know, these uh, people like myself who have done a fair bit of remote work in the last handful of years. It's like, oh my God, now you've been uh, opened to how much more time you have in your day. It's crazy. I mean, for example, this podcast that we're doing, right? Uh, it's 7.30 in the morning. That's real, like, I mean, that's not the earliest in the morning, but it's kind of early, but I don't have to get into the city. You know, I, I, I you just get ready in the morning is zero time. So the equivalent would be 8.30. So it's, oh, almost, yeah. it's almost like you are honestly getting more hours in the day by working from home. I still think there's still, like I'm, I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm looking forward to the, the quarantining to end because I, I think like, we all are. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to get out there again, but I am super excited about the concept that people are going to move more and more online. Here's a, here's a couple of words uh, that, and I don't know why they annoy me, but they just, they annoy me. I think to the extent that you remember how email used to be capital E 
hyphen male. And then at some <laughs> point, we all just collectively got sick of going capital E hyphen male. But now it's just email. It's, just, it, it's become its own word, right? It's not short for something. It, it exists in and of itself. Uh, there's a couple of words I don't like. Webinar. I don't like webinar. I don't know why I don't like webinar. I just really don't like the word webinar. I feel like it's, I just, I feel like it's the nineties. I feel like I'm about to surf the world wide web and end up on a webinar. You know, it's just, there's a couple of things. So, you know, we, it, and when we do things, we like to kind of change the wording a little bit rather than a webinar. We're doing a digital, uh, a digital tour. You know, like we, we do a digital tour of events and That's cool. uh, yeah. And I, I, I want people to kind of ex- experience as close as humanly possible. So for example, we've been doing uh, selfies, right? So, you know, at every event, at every event, there's event photos. We can't do event photos here, but we're getting hundreds of advisors uh, dialing in for our digital tour. So what we're doing is we're getting people to take selfies <laughs> while watching it. And it's hashtag ISO selfie for isolation selfie, but it's also like ISO selfie. But anyway, uh, (laughs) you know, we're getting pictures of, uh, of people and, and, and then posting them online on, onto XY and we're trying our best to replicate. And so there's, there's a couple of, there are things that I find are a little bit tacky, but hopefully words like webinar will go the way of the Buffalo and, and we can just begin to talk about, work online virtual digital work as normal um you know it should be if you're going to call it a a seminar just call it a seminar like just because it's online it doesn't actually you don't have to come up with some cool word it's like you know you know when there was um vlogs you know that's another (laughs) word i didn't like right i know what is that (laughs) why do you you have to say vlog vlog it's such a horrible (laughs) word uh, it's just a video. It's a video. It's a video. It's online. Don't make it weird. Don't call it a vlog. It sounds so, like a creature out of Lord of the Rings or something. <laughs> yes, exactly. There's, just, there's a whole, there's a whole uh, attempted lingo that came out of the 90s that I, that's, there's no need to go capital E hyphen male anymore. Just yeah, right, drop, right. Drop the weirdness. I love that stuff. I, and you're almost putting me to a challenge because I have been calling them webinars. I also admit I don't ter- terribly like the term. No. It almost has a cheese factor to it that you just, you, you gotta, you gotta, so I, now you're challenging me to come up with a better term, which is good. This is growth right here. Absolutely, man. Uh, yeah, look, it's, I don't know why I don't like, I, I, it, this, the connotation that comes to mind when I think of a webinar is I'm going to be bored and I'm going to be pitched to. They're the two things that I anticipate feeling when, <laughs> when I hear the, the word webinar. And so uh, I just, I like, it's a, it's a, if, if I, and I, I, the, the, the grandiose, I guess, attempt of having a digital event tour is to replicate as close as possible uh, what we do in real life. And I think if we, if we view tech as an enabler, as an efficiency, uh, not so much effective, but certainly if, if it's an efficiency tool to replicate what we do in, in real life, then I, I think we don't need to be weird about it and start calling it strange names from the 90s. That is just a weird thing in my opinion, but anyway. <laughs> I totally agree. I, and I like your, your point about being bored and getting pitched. Yeah. It's true. And there's nothing, I mean, if you've got value and you're trying to, to sell something like more power to you, right? That's okay. Totally. But, but trust and transparency, do it in a way where people want to buy from you where yes. they're not feeling pitched to, but they're feeling educated and empowered to make a good decision. Oh, absolutely. Like the world goes around on sales, like sales makes the world go around. I've got no totally. problem in the world with it. Um, everyone needs to buy everything all the time. You just need to be the best person to solve those problems. I got absolutely no, no problem in the world uh, with the whole concept of it, but it, it's almost, it's, it's, it, I, I feel like the world's been stuck in this uh, you're 14 years old and you're at your first disco and you're asking the, the girl for a dance, you know, you're just like, Hey, is this what we do? And it's just, it's all a little bit, um, I don't know. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but I, the good oh, thing that I've found that has come out of this COVID is we're all moving past that really rapidly. 
And uh, yeah, I, I think the new normal and just doing business digitally just makes a hundred percent sense in my opinion. It totally does. It, it works. It's proven to work. And that doesn't mean you have to be a hundred percent virtual or digital too. There will be times where an in-person meeting is actually necessary or important or just feels like a right thing to do. And that's cool. Right. And I'll do that if I have to, I will fly anywhere in the country to have an in-person meeting if it's necessary. Mm. I just don't, I mean, I love to travel anyway, so that's fine. But like, so it's but the, the efficiencies and going back to your time saving piece, simple math. I've shared this with a number of advisors. Let's just say you're wasting one hour a day, five days a week, driving to and from your office or client meetings, just at one least, hour a day. Right. And so th this is low, right? And because it's a lot more than that. We know that. But let's just say it's one hour a day, 50 weeks a year. You take two weeks off for holiday. That's 250 hours. And you're oh. like, ah, oh, 250 hours. Do the math. That's over six 40 hour work weeks. Wow. You were in a car. Six 40 hour work weeks. Horrible. You'll never get that time back. Yeah. Sure, you can listen to cool podcasts, right? Rock yeah. on. Yeah. But but you know, if you're if you're business, if you're doing business, like that's not business. That's just wasting time. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, I fully agree. Um, for the advisors that are out there that want to learn more, that because let's face it, for if for me, I've been doing remote stuff and digital stuff and social stuff and all this stuff for about five years. And it, it, it's, I'm still learning all the time. There's sure, so many are, advisors yeah. out there, so many that, are, that have yet to even take their first step, right? And I think something like you've put together a blueprint to be able to go X, Y, Z, this is how you do it. It's going to take this amount of time to get up and running, but you're going to be able to do it, I think is really cool. And thank you so much for coming on. For advisors that want to know how to do that, where do they go? Virtualadvisorsystem.com. And that's uh, OR with advisor? That's OR, yes, sir. Yeah. Cool. Go there and it, everything you need to know is there. I've started a blog recently. So there's some great articles on there. More to come on that site. I am hosting a webinar <laughs> uh, about I'm that. not coming. I'm out. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to switch up the, the term now. It's great. But that's that's uh, May 14th for anybody that wants to. And that might be kind of tough for you folks over in Australia, but it's going to be recorded. So there'll be a, cool. there'll be a replay. Awesome. Um, Very so good. That's, that's where you're going. And seriously, like hit me up. Like, you know, I, I've been working a lot lately because of the, of this pandemic. A lot of advisors have been asking questions, but I want to help. So hook, look me up on LinkedIn, send me an email, like ask your questions. Don't be squeamish. I'm here to help. Very cool, man. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Cheers, Clayton, man. It's been awesome. It's always nice to meet someone else who's like-minded, cool, all that good stuff. So I, I appreciate it, brother. Thank you, sir. Cheers, mate. Cheers, man. Cheers, man.